Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 8, Applying Chemical Ideas. This is it, the last video in the chemistry series. It's number 20 and it's just looking at some of the broader issues that you might want to consider in the chemical design and synthesis processes. So by now we have a nice list of factors that we should be able to evaluate. Please look at the depth that's required in a verb like evaluate. You need to make a judgment about these things. So therefore you can present a lot of information, but you also need to evaluate and judge which of these factors are really important when you are considering a, a chemical synthesis process. And in our last one, we look at some of these broader issues around environmental, social and economic issues. And in order to do that, I thought we'd set this last one in the context of sulfuric acid production. So our final case study is around the production of sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is a really important substance. It's one of those substances that we've used a number of times as a catalyst, as it is a really good dehydrating agent. So if we think about things like our esterification process, if we also think about the conversion between uh, ethanol to ethene or ethene to ethanol, these both uh, can use sulfuric acid as a catalyst for the reactions. And so, and beyond that, of course, sulfuric acid has a huge range of applications. The process for producing sulfuric acid in an industrial scale or on an industrial scale is quite complex and has a number of different steps associated with it. The first thing we need to do is we need to extract sulfur from the ground. Usually that's tied up in deposits of metallic ores or um, it can be found underground and removed in a process known as the fresh process. I'm not going to go into detail on that. There is a bit of information. If you want to have a look at it, it's quite an interesting little process of how we get something like sulfur up from uh, underground. Um, and there's a few really important environmental impacts associated with that. Um, not the least of which is that the sulfur um, will will naturally undergo some of these reactions um, as it oxidizes uh, in the presence of oxygen. And so we get a few of these interesting little things that are contributors to acid rain in the atmosphere uh, as equally as they are a desired product of sulfuric acid production in an industrial context. Um, the next part is called the contact process and the main reason it's called the contact process is because we use a catalyst in order for the uh, reactants to be in contact with the catalyst to speed up the rate of the reaction and also to control that reaction. Because this is an equilibrium, all of the things that we've previously talked about in terms of temperature and pressure and concentration uh, all affect our uh, yield and also are part of our reaction conditions that we can discuss in terms of sulfuric acid production. Once again, you would need a little more background if you wanted to go into this in detail, but even just being given an equation like this should tell you something about the effect of temperature on a, a delta H negative, so therefore exothermic process, uh, the effect of pressure where we have 2 and 2 plus 1 is 3, um, moles of gases and also how we may or may not be able to remove these. The third step is to turn the sulfur trioxide, the SO3, into sulfuric acid. Now this can be a very dangerous process and so often there's a, a step in between the conversion of sulfur trioxide and the production of sulfuric acid and that produces another little product called oleum. So what I want to do is just have a little bit of a look at some of these and see if we can identify some very important factors that contribute to either our um, environmental, our social or our economic um, implications when we're looking at processes like this. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get the sulfur out of the ground and this is a nice little um, visual learning aid from Nelson that I thought would be quite useful just to give you a bit of an overview of the actual production process for sulfuric acid. 
So we start with our sulfur, which we've extracted from the Earth's crust, and that can be done either through um, uh, smelting of ores, or it can also be done through the fresh process, as I talked about um, earlier. What we then want to do is we want to combine the sulfur with oxygen in order to produce sulfur dioxide. Now, this naturally will occur in the atmosphere, particularly if we've heated up the sulfur to uh, melt it, to turn it from a solid into a liquid and then bring it to the surface. Often it, if it will do that inside of um, some water, so often very hot, high pressure water. Um, so it's already very warm. We know the reaction rate increases with increasing temperature. So there are some environmental implications if some of the sulfur does this in the atmosphere. Because it will go through exactly the same process, just not in a controlled way, and will end up with um, acid rain as a very important um, environmental consequence. So that's what happens if we don't control the process. If we do control the process, hopefully what we're able to do is to um, use the contact process to move the sulfur dioxide towards sulfur trioxide. Uh, this is an equilibrium. So it's going to have some important consequences, particularly economically, as we work out how we maximize our um, yield while we maintain aspects of industrial safety and also environmental uh, responsibility. So you want to make sure that you've talked a little bit about each of those. Now, one of the interesting things here is this product, Oleum. And you can see what we've done in order to do this is to add some uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, to our sulfur trioxide. So if you just add all these like terms, we've got two hydrogens, we've got two sulfurs, and we've got three and four, which is seven um, uh, oxygens and this is what produces our oleum. Now oleum is much safer to be using. Uh, often the sulfuric acid can be produced as a mist because we're going to be adding water to get it straight straight down in this direction. So we will also add water to our oleum and that means we'll have um, H4S2O8 which is two lots of H2SO4. So that's where we can take our oleum, add it to water. It's a little safer for us to produce our sulfuric acid as our final product. When you're looking at any of these industrial processes, there's actually a lot involved in them. And I've kind of skated very quickly across the top because I want you to start to look at some of these processes, do a little bit of reading, think about them in the context of those very important factors that we've been looking at that are critical to your understanding of any industrial process. Remember what we want to do is one we want to look at availability, availability of reactants or of reagents. We also want to look at reaction conditions. We're interested in yield and and purity. We're also interested in industrial use and how these can be um, expanded to increase demand. And also, as we've looked at finally, some of these broader issues. It's interesting too to have a look at how chemistry is continuing to change. We talk about atom economies. We talk about green chemistry now. We're much more environmentally aware than we used to be about the sorts of impacts that chemical reactions have on the environment and on ourselves, on our populations and on the areas in which we live. So we're trying to be much more sensitive now to what are the implications of each of these different types of industrial processes and how we make sure that we consider all of the issues and all of the factors that contribute. Good luck in your exams and for the last time, thanks for watching.